Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing January beauty favorites. I'm just gonna get right into it. I'll zoom you in so you can see this skin situation because I do wanna talk about a primer. The mask, the, it will not go away. Um, it's really only in the mask area, like where the straps go up and everything. So I want a primer that's going to help smooth out some of this texture and I've really been liking the marshmallow primer from NYX. Um, it just kind of helps almost create a little bit of a blurring effect on my skin. So I focus this on the cheek area and really push and just blend that over the textured areas of my skin. Um, I actually started using different, I'm on week two and I'm documenting every week. I'm hoping in a month we can really see a difference. And I'm putting that on um, TikTok because I actually, have started to really like TikTok, even though I don't have that many uploaded yet. I really like it for short form content and I feel like the different progress will be a little bit easier to do just doing quick uh, weekly check-ins. I'm noticing a difference in this, like the stuff that was already there. Um, I still have a few that have popped up, but I don't know. I'm just really hoping that by springtime you can get a better hold on this situation, but you'll see once I put the makeup on top, this really does help just kind of like smooth everything out and make it look a little bit less bumpy. I am also really quickly going to prime my eyelids. I wasn't using eye primer for the longest time and I noticed because I wear, you know, more balms during the winter time, did I just straight up put that into my eyelashes? Oh, she did. Anyway, because I've been wearing a lot of balms just to protect my skin from the dry air, especially my eyelids, my eyeshadows haven't been lasting with just concealer, although they typically do when it's you know not as much of a need to be wearing eye balms during the day. Um, eye primer has really just been helping prevent creasing and the eyeshadows from like moving around on my eyes. So this one's just from Too Faced. It's the Shadow Insurance. It's a good one. I am loving the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. My shade right now is 6 Neutral, and I love how this gives me really great customizable coverage. I feel like it's just really easy to build and get the amount that I want. So I'll just do like a pump right on the back of my hand, start off with a small bead of it, just like that and then start where I want the most coverage. So obviously for me, that's like the cheek area. Now anything that's raised, obviously you're still gonna see it, but it really helps cover up that hyperpigmentation and neutralize the redness without looking too heavy. I'm using an e.l.f. foundation brush. This is really similar to that IT Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe foundation brush, but this one's obviously much cheaper and I like it just as much to be honest. My IT Cosmetics one finally broke and I ended up getting the e.l.f. one. I'm even gonna zoom you in just a tad closer so you can really see the way that this blends out. So I go in with another pump and we're gonna put this where I want some extra coverage. It just gives you this really nice like healthy like moisturized looking skin. Um, I like to do a little bit of a stippling motion. And just push and blend. Really nice, like bouncy, moisturized effect it has on the skin. It's so beautiful. Charlotte's beautiful skin. <laughs> also with this foundation, I definitely prefer brush application. I just feel like the brush gives me the best blend, but I have used it with a sponge as well and I do like it. Um, just my personal preference is definitely brush, but look how good it looks. It just looks very skin-like, very like moisturized skincare skin. Okay, concealer, we're gonna talk about this one. The Colorstay Skin Awaken from Revlon. So beautiful, so soft and creamy, really nice and moisturizing. And again, not too much coverage, just the right amount to where you can hide 
darkness around the eyes and you can also use it to hide hyperpigmentation as well. And I like it around the corners of my nose because I have some residual redness there. And I'll just take my finger and push it in really just to help melt that concealer in get it meshed with my skin. This is definitely one of those concealers where if you use your fingers, you get that magic touch because the heat from your fingers will melt this concealer down and just give you the most beautiful finish. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with these Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wands. Everybody seems to be in love with the bronzing contour versions of those, but I cannot get my hands on one. They always resell, they always sell out and then I'm not really sure when they're gonna be restocked. When I went to Sephora in person, my Sephora girl recommended this from Iconic London. It's the Radiance Booster. She said that this is similar enough that I can use it in the same way and still get the same or a similar effect. And she recommends it to people and that they really like it. So I've actually been using it just like how I would think that I would use the Charlotte Tilbury one. And I do really like it. So this one's in Bronze Glow. It does have a pump versus the little sponge tip applicator. So for me, what I do is pop it on the back of my hand. I'll take a brush. This is a BK Beauty 107. Just pick up the product off the back of my hand so that I get almost like an even application of the product on all the bristles. And then I lay the product down. You want to use a really soft hand when you do this. Don't push too hard because then you're just gonna get too much deposit of the product. And it's not difficult to blend out, but it just makes your life easier if you start off with a light application and blend it out versus if you get a little bit too heavy handed. It does, you know, it's easy to feel like you're in over your head. Um, just because this product does have a good amount of pigmentation. So just blending around the perimeter of the face. Taking my time. I'm really not pushing hard. I'm just, you know, tapping it onto the skin. And I'll always take like a little blending brush, pick up some more excess off the back of my hand. And we're gonna knock this like right into the crease of the eye just to add a little bit of bronze definition. This makes a huge difference, just putting a tiny bit of bronzer in the crease of your eye to add definition. Then you don't have like this blank space on your eyelid and it goes a little bit better with the rest of the face. So it does tend to stay just a touch tacky. So I like to set it with a little bit of powder bronzer just so I don't lose the intensity from the product. I'm just using a light medium from Mario and just lightly pat that right on top. As far as eyeshadows go, I'm still obsessed with this palette. I've recommended it multiple times. It's the Super Nudes from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, it's just so easy for every day and I can throw on just a few colors to get a little bit of, you know, extra definition on my eyes. Take a little bit of the darker brown, you know, knock that right in the outer corner and the lower lash line. This is Secret Spot from Callie Rae and it is such a pretty brown eyeliner. I just run it along the top lash line. And dude, this glides like butter on your eyes. It's such a creamy, beautiful eyeliner. I've recently become a blush girl in the past. I never really liked blush. I didn't wear much of it, but lately I've really been finding tones that I like. This one's kind of special and I think it's really pretty um, and quite seasonless despite being a little bit more pink. So it's Georgia from Benefit. It's a peachy pink with a lot of gold to it and it's quite luminous. So I think it's just really beautiful and makes you look super healthy. Now I like to use an angled brush when I apply it because I like to have just a little bit more precision. <gasps> Look how pretty it is. It's so like soft and subtle, but you can see it just gives you that little bit of juiciness and glow. And I like how it just like wakes up my face. Like I said, I don't know. Now all of a sudden I'm like, I love 
blush. The apples, you can see it's got that little bit of gold. It is ultra beautiful in the sunlight because it just gives you that little bit of luminous glow. And it's just a pretty easy, no fuss, no muss type of shade. Like it's not to anything, but still gives you that little bit of pop on the cheek, which everybody loves. Now I'm just going to set the under eyes a bit. I do find that that Revlon concealer, depending on the day, needs a little bit of powder. I feel like I'm noticing a tiny bit of creasing, so um, my setting powder of choice has definitely been the e.l.f. Hello Halo. Now it's going to give you just a little bit of glow, so it doesn't completely mattify the face. Um, and it's just really pretty lightweight, loose powder. I just take whatever's in the lid, tap it right under my eyes. Now it's luminous, but not luminous enough to look unnatural. And I'll just tap it anywhere. The concealer might, you know, move around a bit. So I'm also really loving the e.l.f. Brow Lift. Probably just by looking at it, reminds you of the Anastasia Brow Freeze. One really important step before you do this, take like a washcloth or whatever you have by your side and wipe your brows clean. Get any residual makeup, like you know foundation and stuff that might be sitting in your brows so that you can avoid that cloudy look and it won't have as much, you know, base makeup mixed into it. I take it on my little spoolie and just brush upward. With this one, it's definitely not as much of like a snatched effect as the Anastasia has, but you still get that same like perky looking brow. It does take a second to set down. Um, so once you've waited a few moments, you can then go in and fill in your brows. I'm using the Mario and I'll just fill in my brows with the Mario brow pencil. Anywhere where I feel like I notice some gapping. This is Champagne Flash from Hourglass. I mentioned this in my 2021 favorites. It's just about gone. I really like this highlight. I could definitely see myself repurchasing when it's entirely used up because I just find myself gravitating towards it and reaching for it a lot. I really like that it's a cream, so I can just apply it with my fingertip like this and you know, push it in exactly where I want it. And it has buildable intensity, so if I do want something a little bit more, you know, like flashy, and a little bit more glowy for the day. I can put a lot more on, but also for just daytime, it's really nice if I don't want anything too crazy. And I like that I can apply it with my fingers because I can strategically avoid all this active acne and not, you know, make it stand out anymore. So I'll just put it like right on the highest point of my cheekbone. It really just melts into your skin in the prettiest, softest way and just like gives you that glow from within. Again, when you use your fingers with a product like this, you really have that magic touch that just makes you glisten and glow. This mascara, I'm telling you, I can't put it down. Ever since I got it, I've just been super impressed with it. It's the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch Mascara. There are so many iterations of this Exhibitionist Mascara from CoverGirl. It's like confusing at this point. I feel like they're all so different that I don't know why they're all like different versions of Exhibitionist. It doesn't really make sense to me. But I like this one the best and I love the brush. But what I do is it does pick up a lot of product. So I do like to just do a little scrapey scrape moment and then again wiggle at the base of the lash and do like a little bit of rolling when you take it through the lengths so you get some separation going it's a really nice daytime mascara that'll give you a little bit of length and wispiness without going overboard because i feel like you can tell it just kind of opens up the eye and gives you a little bit more length but i don't think it's anything too dramatic to wear. It's like overpowering. See, I feel like it's such a good one. I have three lip color favorites this month. So the first is from L'Oreal. This is the Feathery Fleur number 50, a really beautiful rosy toned gel gloss. And I just think it's like really feminine and soft and still looks nice and natural. Super pretty, just like really nice and fresh, perfect for every day. This is Never Grow Up from Too Faced. These are really pretty sheer balms and they just, again, 
give you like that little bit of color. You can see the lip color next to my natural color. It's really close. I think it's like a really pretty like feminine pink that just wakes up your face. They also smell super good. The last one is a gloss. I'm gonna do a little bit of overlining. This one's the NYX Nude Truffle. And then this was actually one that I saw SMLXO talking about on her stories and I was like, I need it. Um, this is the shade Daisy Pink from Lawless and it is a beautiful, sheer, milky bubblegum pink and it's just so beautiful. Like, look at that. This one was by far my favorite of the month. I love how it's just this like bright, glossy, milky pink, but it's sheer enough that you can still see your natural lip color through the lip gloss. And I just think it's so flattering and so pretty. And it also has this very soft minty tingle to it. So it just even has like this really nice, almost like invigorating feel on the lips. So I just, I also really like the sensation of the gloss as well. All right, so those were all of my January beauty favorites. Do you guys still like monthly roundups? Is it something that you enjoy watching? They're personally one of my favorite videos to film, but I noticed that not that many other people do monthly favorites anymore. So I'm like, do we still like these or are we not really as into them anymore? I always think they're really fun because I can really see like what I'm picking over other things. Like for example, the Charlotte Tilbury foundation I was absolutely obsessed with, but it was like neck and neck with the NARS um, light reflecting foundation. And I found myself using that one just a bit more, the Charlotte Tilbury one, but I also really liked the NARS one. So like, it's just fun to me to see which one I picked over the others. So um, I will list and link everything in the description box down below, as well as specific shades that I wear. So if that's helpful, all of that information will be down below for you. Please leave a comment and just say hi because I love talking to you. I would love it so much if you would subscribe to my channel. Um, come follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And if you guys are digging beauty TikToks, let me know like what you wanna see. I think it's gonna be a really great way for me to do like quick tutorials, quick reviews, quick first impressions, stuff like that. So I am actually really excited about doing more like short form content on there. And hmm, I think that's everything I wanted to say for this video. So uh, I'll see you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye everyone.